You are listening to the Money Matters Podcast with Jack Mallers and Dylan Lito, brought to you by nobody. We self-produce this podcast. So if you want to support us, you can buy your Bitcoin or do your Bitcoin stuff with Strike. This is episode six. But more importantly, this is the first ever Mailbag Monday. So we had five episodes, all with pretty cool guests. We had, let's see, Jack Dorsey, Saquon Barkley, Dave Portnoy, Paul Saladino, Roya Maboob all throughout last year. And the biggest feedback we got was you guys wanted to hear more from us. You guys wanted to hear us shoot the shit, talk about Bitcoin, talk about what's relevant in the world. That's why people follow us at the end of the day is, yes, football and steak is cool, but Bitcoin is why people follow us. So Mailbag Mondays are every single Monday. You'll get an episode from Dylan and I. And we're just going to talk about whatever you guys tweeted us, right? Um, so whatever is relevant, whatever is cool, whatever is fun, uh, we're going to chat. So with that, I think you're the guy with the agenda, my friend. Yeah, super excited to get into this. Uh, thanks, everyone, for for all the questions. It really helps us frame this conversation. And I think uh, the main thing that people want to hear about is get on zero. Uh, New Year's Day. Uh, you posted an absolute banger of a tweet, which suggested that you no longer hold any dollars. Um, tell a quick story about this. Uh, we were talking about this prior to New Year's, and you had come to me with this notion that you no longer wanted to own dollars. And I kind of thought um, that you might have slipped uh, and hit your head or something. It sounded really crazy to me. Uh, but the more that you explained it, uh, the more awesome that it sounded. And then you finally posted a uh, screenshot of your Chase bank account with literally zero dollars in it, which I think for most uh, average everyday people would probably be one of the scariest things to ever see uh, in your entire life. But uh, you no longer hold hold dollars. You only hold Bitcoin. Um, how does that work? Um, how does it work? I, well, t- technically how it works, I spend on credit. I mean, do you spent do you not use a credit card i use a credit card all all the time okay. um but the notion that you hold no dollars for example uh i went to lunch with my parents today mm-hmm. and i had to pay for dinner the place didn't accept bitcoin whatsoever mm-hmm. if you own no dollars how do you go through everyday life well what'd you spend did you spend a credit card i did spend a credit card. okay so none of your dollar balance went down right you spent your your credit balance that you owe went up Yes. Okay. So did you need to own dollars to pay for, what'd you say, lunch or dinner? I think you used both. Which one was it? It was like three o'clock. It was okay. Like a little bit of a mix. Oh yeah, boy. Lunch, that a boy. Okay. So you didn't need to own, technically you didn't need to own dollars to pay for that? No. So that's how it works. I, I, so first of all, when people are like, oh, what'd you say that I slipped and hit my head? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got hit in the head with a resounding amount of common sense, <laughs> in my opinion. No, that's literally what happened. I, you know, there are some folks out on the internet that I follow that have been living without owning any dollars and only owning Bitcoin for quite some time now. And it kind of hit me all at once. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you bullish dollars? God, no. No? no. Okay. Neither am I. Are you bullish Bitcoin? Yes. Okay. So when I say I don't own any of the thing that only goes down and I own as much as I can of the thing that only goes up, I'm the one that's confused when everyone's like, how, how, what has gotten into you? What's gotten into me? I don't know. Common sense, logic. Why would I own any of the thing that just goes down? Um, so what I did is I took all of my dollars, I converted them all to bit. And I mean, like, I feel like I live my life enough in, like, I don't, I don't tweet from a anonymous account or anything. Like people kind of know enough about me. I, I used to keep, um, a, a decent amount of dollars in my checking account or savings account for the same reason It's like, well, what if, you know, rainy day, what if something happens? Yep. I was going to say the exact number, but I won't because that's just unnecessary. But let's say, you know, it was, it wasn't small. And then as I got more and more into Bitcoin over time, I was like, well, this is 
egregious, right? Because the way, I mean, I'm so into the best performing money ever. I was like, okay, yeah, that, that's, that's a good rainy day fund. That's like five Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin goes up and that's only four Bitcoin, three Bitcoin, two Bitcoin. And you're realizing asset price inflation in real time. And I was like, that's way too much fiat for a rainy day. It just kind of, it just melts. It just becomes less of things that I actually need in my life over time. And so I reduced it significantly. Uh, and then recently I said, why do I own any? I mean, the whole game is own assets. No, no, no billionaire owns a bunch of dollars. If you have a billion dollars, you, you'd be lucky to find a billionaire that owns a hundred grand of US dollars. They have a billion dollars worth of other stuff. Mm. And so Bitcoin is the best expression of fiat debasement. It's the thing that goes up the most. You can't make any more of it. So if you, there's an infinite amount of dollars that are being created, these infinite amounts of pieces of paper have to compete for the assets. So there's, there are infinite amounts of green pieces of paper are competing for a fixed amount of Bitcoins. I don't know why I would own... I don't know. It, it kind of blew my mind that people were like so flabbergasted by that. It, to me, it's, it became like very logical. Like, why do you own dollars? I don't understand why you own any. Ever since you did that, I mean, I, I, I've been thinking through the same thing. I, I wonder if there is a sense of like indoctrination. I mean, the notion of having dollars and like to me feels like for a lot of people that is materially what your wealth is sort of attributed to. I mean, I think that given the absolute lack of access to owning assets that someone our age or that, uh, you know, people of our generation are used to that the dollars feel like, you know, almost like an indoctrination at this point. It's like you, you need them to prove that you can buy the thing or like are wealthy. I don't know. Right. Well, I actually think, okay. So in the, you reference a tweet storm in the tweet storm, you know, people should go read it. I briefly talked about, why the dollar is such a piece of shit, which <laughs> is, no, I mean, it hasn't always been that way. So quick history, the the dollar divorced itself from the gold standard. So a piece of US dollar used to be redeemable for gold. So you couldn't print dollars because if I then went and redeemed it for gold and there wasn't enough gold, right? So the piece of paper, all it was is it resembled a piece of gold that was actually in a vault or in a bank, or at, technically at the central bank. And so in 1971, the U.S. government said, we're removing ourselves from that standard. So they're admitting to their insolvency. They're, that, in 1971, the U.S. Gover government admitted that they don't have the gold that they claimed they did according to the dollars that were in circulation. So... In 1971, the U.S. government officially became insolvent. Does that mean that's when they started their insolvency? Probably not. Probably started earlier, right? When someone in a relationship admits they're cheating, they didn't cheat 10 seconds ago. They probably been yeah. cheating for a very long time. They just got caught. Yep. Okay, so in 1971, the government got caught and was insolvent, but that what they effectively were saying is you can no longer redeem gold for these things, so we can now just create unlimited amounts of them. We're unbounded in our ability to make currency. So what that does is when you create unlimited currency, you're devaluing the currency. You're making it worth less. When there's more issued, then they become worth less. And so the price of assets like real estate or stocks or anything becomes worth more in the currency that's being devalued. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in 1971, it became a game of, holy shit, the government's insolvent. They're going to be printing a lot of currency. I need to not own the thing that they're going to print a lot of. And people began to use assets as money. So you're right. Traditionally, I, and anyway, a little long-winded, but this is where I think your thinking comes from, is traditionally, you're right. Your, your grandfather or your great-grandfather cared about owning dollars because owning dollars were redeemable for gold. That's wealth. That's money. That's how I know I can pay for my family and take care of myself. But then very quickly... If you wanted to store and hold and grow wealth, you had to own assets. And by the way, that's fucked up this country tremendously. I think now, I think it's, I'm going to botch this only slightly, but I think 90% of the wealth in America is owned by 10% of the population. So what happens is people then say, holy shit, the government is going to print a lot of these things. 
these things are going to just become worthless. I don't want to hold these things anymore. And if you can afford to own real estate, then you do. So real estate, 1971, uh, average home was 20 grand. Now let's say you had 10 grand, can't afford a home. So you're like, shit, I got to start saving and get a home. But then the next day they print money. The next day they print money. What does that do? That makes the $10,000 that that guy has worth less and less and less and the real estate worth more and more and more. So all of a sudden the average home is 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand. Now the average home is 500 grand. That's insane. So what happens is if you own financial assets, then you become naturally richer. You benefit from the money printing. If you can't afford financial assets, if you couldn't afford a home, you get poorer, no matter what, right? That doesn't matter. It's just so what has happened, 90% of our population is not contributing to the like top uh, like ownership of wealth. So a very small number of people in this country actually own financial assets. And then pretty much everyone else is living paycheck to paycheck and getting gradually poorer as the government prints money, goes to war, comes up with stimulus checks and COVID and all this stuff. And so Bitcoin is an amazing solution because it's scarcer than anything else. So you talk about owning something that no one can print more of. It's the only financial asset ever where they can't make any more of it. It's the only asset that we all have access to. If you have 10 grand, five grand, $10, $10 million, you can get access to it. And you don't need anyone's permission or help to hold it. So I don't need like, oh, thank God I have a portfolio of stocks until, you know, my broker goes down or steals it from me or there's a law on how to tax it. Bitcoin I can store in my brain. No one can make any more of it. Everyone has access to it. Beautiful. So I live in a world, I was born into a country where they just continually devalue the currency. And... I was thankfully born into a generation that is lucky enough to see Bitcoin created. And so why would I, it also was kind of like a, it was kind of taking a stance too. Like, why would I own those things? They only go down and I'm lucky enough to have access to something that only goes up. What does that mean? Taking a stance, taking a stance on what? Taking a stance. Fuck because fuck these people. (laughs) No, come on. Um, and I, you know, all these fucking people on Twitter that, you know, oh, you're, I don't like when you curse and I don't like, when, you know, you could at least own a little bit of dollars. You don't have to be so extreme. You don't have to be so aggressive, Jack. Like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. What do you want me to go protest outside the White House? Here, let me sell some of my Bitcoin, own a nice cushion of U.S. dollars and go protest outside the White House if I want things to happen. Say, Stop printing dollars. Stop (laughs) printing dollars. And I'll march around Washington, D.C. with a fucking cardboard sign that's, please stop printing these things. And then I'll work myself up an appetite and I'll have a vegan burger made out of leaves, right? And and, and tofu soy salad. And then when I get stressed, I'll take those fucking highlighter pink cylinder nicotine pens and I'll suck on it all day. (laughs) Fuck that. You got the wrong guy. Sorry. Yeah. That's what taking a stance is. Those things aren't in my portfolio. You want to know my portfolio? I'll tell everyone in the world my portfolio. I own Bitcoin. I own real estate. I own equity in my company. That's a man's portfolio. I own the hardest money no one can make more of. I own property to take care of myself and my family and put a roof over our head. And I own a business because I contribute to this world. I build tools for people. That's it. So yeah, part of it, could I, could I technically, come on, dude, you own, own five grand. Come on, it's not going to kill you. I know it's not going to kill me. But I'm also part of the generation that's going to spend the next 80 years on this fucking planet. And so, no, take a stand and be proud of it. Fuck this. Garbage. All my government, war, COVID, monetary stim, bailouts. Fuck that. Let me explain something. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Mm. Weak men create hard times. Mm. That is the cyclical nature of being human, of progress, right? So where is that realized? Our founding fathers of this country went through hard times. I mean, you got to have respect for a guy like George Washington, right? Hell of a guy. No, come on. Hell of a guy. Sitting here, I don't know a soul on this planet that can't tip their cap to Abe Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, 
right? Those were hard times that created strong men, right? Yeah. Those strong men let things fail in the Great Depression. Mm. There was no bailout. Everyone went under. You know who didn't print a bunch of money and bail out Chase Bank and fucking Lehman Brothers? You know who didn't get a bailout? The people that had to live through the Great Depression. Okay? Those were hard times that created strong people. What did those strong people do? They won World War I and World War II. Kicked ass. Right? Kicked ass. Why? Because we had a solid foundation of an economy that was real. And it worked. Right? Okay? An actual free market. An actual free market. And that's the founding of this country. Don't be a bitch. Let things <laughs> fail. If it doesn't work, let it go. Yeah. What's it look like living in a universe that isn't real? Okay. So we win World War II in great times, right? We're the king of the world, a country that has real principles, morals, ethics, hard work, freedom, democracy. And we end up bailing out everyone else. After World War II, we didn't gloat and get cocky about it. We said, all right, everyone's down pretty bad. Everyone's dusting off after just killing each other for decades. Here, who needs help getting back on their feet? That was America. But good times create weak men. That's what we're living through now. Right? Dog shit leadership. <laughs> Everyone... I have to listen to to understand how much poor I'm getting, whether I can leave my house, gray hair, old, dying. My president can't ride a bike. Weak leadership. Hard times, strong men. Strong men, good times. These good times of what was the heart and soul of America have created weak leadership, and these now, now weak leadership creating hard times and that's what we're born into my generation so what are you crying about on the internet that i don't own any dollars or that i said the f word i'm not fucking around i'm taking a stance well you want me to protest outside of the fed janet yellen stop printing dollars janet stop what the fuck do i look like no we created an alternative financial system we as in humanity that they can't stop that they can't change. And so I don't want a single dollar in my portfolio. Fuck off. Well, it's 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 super interesting, right? Because I feel like Got me to wound up. Yeah, no, my Jesus. Bad. I feel like uh for some people it feels like almost out of like you you're out of whack, right? Like it's like out of touch not to own a dollar. Like you you're you're tapped into something that is not a part of what everyone else is tapped into. But to me, what feels out of touch is the fact that you hit on it, I, I think, pretty well. These gray hairs are like, uh, don't worry about it. Inflation's completely under control. I mean, I've been alive for 29 years now. I remember a dollar menu at McDonald's. A uh, McChicken these days is like $3.50. I mean, the, the, the notion that, oh, everything's under control. Don't worry about it. We got this. It's insane. Well, Everything is more expensive. And everyone I know feels it. When I used to go grocery shopping with my parents and spend a hundred dollars at jewel fucking osco i came home with enough like enough food to it was insane and now a hundred dollars i mean you're lucky to make it out with a steak dinner i again i couldn't agree more so i'm not going to yeah you know these guys consistently lie consistently manipulate consistently are on the wrong side of history but Dude, owning no dollars scares me. No, be a leader. Be a leader. Get the pink vape pen out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> Stop eating leaf burgers. Let's go. I mean, come on. What are we like? What are we, again? No one's going to, no one's here to, this isn't because I elected the wrong president. No. Consistent garbage. Right. And so, what are you going to do about it? Here's a, a quote I love There are two ways to express power in this world. Voice and exit. When voice is no longer sufficient, you have one option. Exit. Exit. Get out. Goodbye. And is it going to be hard? Yeah. But that's okay. It could be hard and it's going to be okay. It can be hard and we're going to figure it out. But no, I 
what for my generation, for my kids? No, I'm not going to ask politely for Janet Yellen. Please, how about this time around? Don't go to war. Don't just spend money you don't have bombing people. Stop giving out stimulus checks. Let something fail, for fuck's sake. Oh, I'm tired of it. We created an alternative financial system. I don't need Janet Yellen. Mm. And so I don't want any of that shit in my portfolio. Fuck it. And so not only is it the most financially responsible thing, I think it's a movement. And that's why I tweeted it. I didn't have to tell people, but I said in that, I'm taking a stance. And I think over time, my generation and people around this country should. You know, if we all spent on credit and just owned Bitcoin, we would run the U.S. insolvent. <laughs> it's not Joe Biden's country. It's our country. It's a democracy. Facts. So I'm whatever. I mean, I've made my case in point. So I'm done. I'm done holding something that only goes down. Logically speaking, you know, who cares the propaganda that you're told on your TikTok for you page? If I were to look you in the eye and say, do you or do you not want to own something that will only go down? What would your answer be? Of course not. Of course not. And then I look you in the eye and say, you're lucky enough to be alive while something that only goes up is created. Do you or do you not want to own it? What's your answer? Of course. Okay. So uh, am I crazy or am I logical? And then am I, am I a dick or am I passionate? Because you know how people fund war? They debase your currency to go bomb people. So I'm an, am I an asshole or am I passionate? Because I'm, I'm opting out of funding war. I'm done. Mm. Every bomb that America drops wasn't funded by me. You own dollars. You participated in contributing to that. I'm not part of it. So taking a stance. And the beautiful thing is in a free market, if I'm wrong, then I pay for it. If mm. I'm right, I benefit from it. Nobody needs, I don't need anything other than the, the free ability to express myself. So that's, that's where I'm at. I think the message is loud and clear. I have one more question on the point of practicality, which is you were saying that you spend on credit. At some point, you got to pay down that credit. And I assume if you own assets only that you would need to then sell those assets to pay down that credit, which is like, listen, I'm not a math guy. Simple math. If all I own is houses and I run up a credit card bill, I buy a house for 100 bucks. I bet on that going up more than the dollar. Let's say the house is now worth 200 bucks. Then I need to sell the house to pay down the credit. So you pay taxes on yeah, gains to pay down capital gains. Yeah, capital gains tax. Like what? That well, is that a winning strategy? Yeah, I mean, so a few things. You and I we we got dinner yesterday in Chicago. So we're, yep. Dylan and I are walking through Chicago yesterday, and he's like, uh, "Yo, let's go to the steakhouse in Chicago called Bivets." He's like, yo, let's go to Bivette's. Great steakhouse. Bivette's, not only great steakhouse, probably the best steakhouse in Chicago. Yeah. Maybe. I'm a, so I'm a Maple and Ash guy. Shout out Maple and Ash. But <laughs> um, Bivette's has got to be up there. So it's also just like egregiously expensive, which is no problem. People work hard. Buy whatever you want. But my response was, so you own dollars still. I don't. And my response was, they like that steak is overpriced. Like there's like a high quality steak doesn't need to be $500. And it was an interest. We talked about this interesting mindset of like, if you own an excess amount of dollars, like, Ooh, I got a bonus or, Ooh, uh, I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. Then you're like, Ooh, I could go to this nice, nice steakhouse. When I own Bitcoin, it's so interesting where I'm like, I don't want to get rid of the Bitcoin. All of a sudden, the way I think about my life is like the point I'm trying to make is all of a sudden you live within your means. So first of all, if you're getting a paycheck, you should not be living exceeding that paycheck where you need to be selling assets to live. That means you're living beyond yourself, right? So Bitcoin, when you own a hard money that actually retains and grows its value over time, you're incentivized to live within your means and save. 
the dollars ruined everyone's ability to save. So if you have, if you lo- open your bank account, you're like, oh shit, I got a little bit in there. Yeah, let's go to the most expensive dinner we could possibly <laughs> go to. And it was interesting because I, I'm the opposite, right? And I'm like, no, no, no. The thing that I open my phone and I've got, oh, I've got a lot of, I got a lot of sats in there. I don't want to send, I don't want to sell any. I'm mm. cool eating ground beef. So it's interesting the way it changes the way I think about things. So but the first rule is just don't live beyond your means. Right. If you get a paycheck. Live within your paycheck. Don't be a dick. Don't be flashy. Be humble, right? That's step one. Step two is I also get confused about the capital gains point. It's like, dude, what do you do about capital gains? What do you mean? It's a, I, I've made a capital gain. Can you imagine if I didn't have capital gains? Tax? Capital, <laughs> gain, capital gains is when I make money. Right. Okay, yeah, so that makes sense. I bought Bitcoin, and then since I bought Bitcoin, the dollar got debased and Bitcoin went up. Oh shoot! I owe the government a little bit of that. Okay, what's how do I avoid that? I guess by just getting debased and losing money. Right. So I have two options: I could either make money and give the government some, or I could just lose money. And everyone's like, "How could you possibly choose the one where you make money? You'd have to pay taxes." Yeah, newsflash, guys: the government makes you pay taxes when you make money. So what? You want me to uh, be a tax evader and go to jail? I'm not there. So yeah. Like I, I I don't know when I log when I log into Twitter and everyone's like, dude, what? You have to pay cap gains. Like, yeah, I've made money. Is that a compliment? <laughs> I'm doing that means my strategy's working. Yeah. Right? Can you imagine if I was like tax loss harvesting? That would mean I'd just be bleeding money, right? So yeah, Bitcoin goes up. And so if I make a big purchase that exceeds my means and I need to take so credit, let's let's do the credit card bill example. Yeah. If my credit card bill is 10 grand every month, so I sell Bitcoin to pay it off, let's say, if I'm you know, not living within my paycheck and stuff, but for example's sake, and I'm selling Bitcoin to pay off my credit card, okay, so I have 12 capital gains events a year because I'm selling once every, every at the end yeah, of the month or month. the beginning of the next. Um, and then, so that's not that complicated. And God forbid I'm marking a capital gain. That means in that period, Bitcoin went up. Good for me. I don't know. So I, I still, I, I don't understand why people don't own no dollar. Why would you own a dollar? Um, or for, you know, whatever. The internet in the world's a big place. But, like, why people don't own the, I mean, Bitcoin's just the best. I mean, even if you were to say, oh, I don't believe in it, I'd rather own real estate. Yeah, but real estate isn't as saleable. I, I cannot sell like a tenth of my house if, in case of emergency. Bitcoin's divisible, extremely liquid, free to hold. I don't pay property tax or anything on it, right? So I store it in my brain. I don't have to pay to hold it. I could sell any fraction of it I want. Oh, and by the way, it's the best performing, like by far. And it's not, it's not like, oh, it had a lucky 10 years. The next 10 years, it'll be the worst performing. No, it's just very simple. It's like you can't make any more of it. It's the scarcest. The scarcest thing performs the best. God damn it. Every time I talk to you, I'm just reminded of the fact that I don't I don't own enough Bitcoin. It's and very fucking frustrating. Dude, I also do believe in the, like taking a stance. Yeah. You know like, how many kids do we know that, you know, just complain they can't afford anything? Do you think they'll you, you think the housing market's ever gonna you think interest rates are coming down? They're super stressed and you know, everyone is in debt and taking antidepressants and stuff. And it's like, oh come on. You know. Hard times create strong men. Let's go. Let's go. This is the, you know, the country I want to live in is separate the money in the state. Let's figure it the fuck out. By the time I got kids, you know, I'm not going to tell my kids that in the heart of, you know, relatively hyperinflation in America and war and political unrest and civil unrest, I wasn't sucking on nicotine sticks and <laughs> refreshing the interest rate market. No, I was Stacking sats. I didn't have a fucking penny in my portfolio. Yeah, I mean, again, I just, I need to own more Bitcoin, but I need to tell you a story about owning more Bitcoin. I uh, I committed what I consider to be the cardinal sin in Bitcoin, which is thinking that I can time the market. And I did this around the ETF announcement. Um, I've been around, I'm going to use the one month of January to give myself a little bit of a of a stronger accolade here but i've been in bitcoin now for eight years uh 2016 2024 been here for eight years 
I'm a big sell the news guy. I mean, this ETF had everyone riled up. There was going to be all this money, you know, BlackRock and $5 billion and uh, Fidelity and ARK and all, you know, this was going to be the, the canon event in Bitcoin. And I was just sell the news. And whether I ended up on the right side of that or not, um, I've just been around the space long enough to know that uh, timing the market is the dumbest thing you could ever possibly try to do because you don't know it. No one knows it. Um, but I somehow ended up on the right side of that ETF announcement. And I was happy about it, but, uh, you know, genuinely a bit surprised. I have enough sats in, you know, that I hold that the upside of obviously would have been able to participate in. But I think people were really looking at, at the ETF to balloon their holdings. And Bitcoin was, you know, this was going to be the thing where the, finally the laser eyes could go away because we hit 100K. Um, what do you think about the price action post, post ETF announcement? Um, I mean, I think we will, all those things will be true. Um, the best way to get wrecked is to (laughs) impose your own bias or expectations on the market. If you tell, I've been on the wrong side of that, like a million times, you tell the free market, like, (laughs) Hey man, I really want, my girlfriend really wants a Louis Vuitton bag. So if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't go up for a few months, that's how you get wrecked. Um, so I don't, I mean, I don't value this stuff at all. There's like, I care about what the Bitcoin price is going to be in a decade. Mm. Um, I don't care about this. I mean, to me, the ETF, I don't work at BlackRock, but I'd have to imagine this came from client demand. They're an asset manager. So they broker the relationship between some of the largest amounts of wealth in the world and a market and assets. Uh, and the fact that there are so many ETFs signals to me that there's a lot of demand for Bitcoin, which again, I think, I think that the government is going to have to print a lot of money. I don't know how to, what detail we want to get into that, but to me, that's the extremely bullish thing is that people want scarce assets right now. Gold is making new all time highs and Bitcoin is just Gold on steroids, it's going to go up so much higher and so f- much faster. And so that's the story. And I also love that Bitcoin's infiltrated Wall Street. On your point of like, wh- why'd it go down? I kind of love it. Hey, Wall Street, welcome to Bitcoin. Why is it going down? Because some criminal named Barry Silbert, with he's got the chubbiest cheeks. And I got, you know, I got a love hate relationship with Barry. I've actually never met him, but like he's done a lot of shit in the industry. I remember I've been in Bitcoin now for 11 years and I remember, you know, as old as time, um, Barry Silbert. Um, but no, supposedly he blew up his fund by lending money to Sam Bankman Freed. And so now he's got to dump all of his Bitcoin on your face. <laughs> Welcome to Bitcoin, Wall Street. And I love that Bitcoin's infiltrating everything that it touches. Like Wall Street can't control it. They want it to go up. Tough shit. You can't control it. You can't call the CEO and say, hey, why is it crashing? It's crashing because some guy lent money to a MIT graduate drug addict and who's now in jail and he's dumping it all over your face. That's why. So it's kind of beautiful in a way. And um, the, the storyline is that even like the asset managers, asset manager, asset managers, asset manager wants Bitcoin because the government clearly has to print a lot of money. Like anyone's paying attention to the markets, the dollar's fucked. So... I mean, it felt like the day of, though, there was so much excitement. You were on a Twitter spaces with Kathy Wood and Elon Musk and yeah. Matt Corallo. It's and a I mean, huge it, deal. Did you expect more from it? Or did, uh, do you think you got exactly what you expected? Yeah, I mean, I think we are getting exactly what mm. we are expecting. It's like one of the best performing ETF launches ever, I think. It's only second to gold, I believe. I mean, it's far surpassed silver already. So... It's fully embedded and embraced by Wall Street. Incredible. I mean, yeah, I'm glad that I celebrated whatever you said, Kathy Wood. Yeah, that's great. (laughs) Um, So, yeah. And again, like the U.S. government is in a pickle. Bank of America is technically insolvent right now. They're not actually because of this accounting rule that the government allows them to pull. But Bank of America technically is insolvent. What does that mean? So Bank of America, there's this thing called uh, held to maturity, which so 
the the okay we're gonna just get into this and you let me know when this is boring or you don't think people will be interested but the u.s banking system the 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 federal reserve and the u.s central bank cares only about one sector of the economy and it's the u.s banking system that's all that, in the U.S. banking system, collects depositors' money, so you deposit to Chase Bank, and then what they do is they turn around and they lend that money to the Fed, and they do that by buying bonds, bonds, Treasury, right? Yeah, okay. So, bank of so let's say in 2020, COVID, everyone stay in your house. Oh my gosh, we don't want the baby boomers, you know, getting sick and dying because we owe them all sorts of health care and shit, and they're old, and we'd be fucked. So no one leave your house, uh, and we're just going to print a bunch of money. So the central bank, I don't even know how to, like, I'm trying to do this with my hands. The central bank prints a lot of money. That money gets put into the economy of the everyday person. The everyday person then goes and deposits that into their bank, right? They're like, where do you want your stimulus check? Oh, send it to Chase. Okay, so now the central bank prints it. That money then gets into Chase, and then Chase gives it back to the central bank, by buying risk-free bonds, right? By buying the 30-year, the 10-year, the two-year, right? So it kind of like, ooh, I'm sorry. It kind of like runs in a circle, right? And it's back. But now on the bank's balance sheet, they have this bond, right? Okay? And the interest rates are like zero or whatever. So, I, you know, not actually, but whatever they were. Okay. Then the, uh, the Fed raises rates as fast as possible because the one thing, these guys don't actually give a fuck about you, but the one thing they have to care about is inflation because inflation is no bueno for politics, right? That's the only thing that we all care about is that like now I can't afford my life anymore. Yep. So you could huff and puff and be full of shit all you want until inflation. Now you, that's the one thing that Joe Biden, your president, will walk into your office and say, fix that shit now. Because no one can afford gas, no one can afford groceries. Well, that's when people get pissed. That's when you get civil unrest. Yeah, that's when people okay. get pissed. So, all the, now, the central bank doesn't actually give a fuck, but it's politics. People say, no, um, the government doesn't control the Fed. The Fed has its own chairman. Bullshit, right? It's all intertwined and conjoined. It has to be. Okay. So, Biden says, fix this shit. How do you fix inflation? You hike up interest rates. So, interest rates go up as fast as they've ever gone up in history of the dollar and what does that do to the bond market bonds get crushed because mm. if i bought a bond at one percent rate and now all of a sudden bonds get five percent hey do you want my one percent bond why the fuck would i want that dog shit i can get a five percent one so now all of the bank the whole banking system is now underwater Insult. the whole banking system is holding these one percent bonds yes because think about it how does a bank make money? It takes your deposit and it, guys, there's no actual dollars sitting in the vault. What a bank does is it takes your dollars, it gives it back to the central bank, and the central bank gives them a bond, which, you know, gives you your principal and interest rate back later. You want a 30 year, you want a 10 year, you want a five year, you want a two year, right? And so what the bank's balance sheet is full of are these bonds. So if you were to show up to the bank and say, hey, I actually want to withdraw my money, what they're actually doing is selling these bonds and then giving you the money. But if they put $10 into a bond and that bond's not worth $5 and you say, I'll take my $10 back, they don't they have, have it because they sell the thing that they did with your $10. Mm -hmm. They're only getting five back. That's what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. That's a run on the bank. So here's what the Fed has. The Fed is stuck in the situation where the entire banking system's insolvent. And that's truly what they care about because the banking system is designed to collect our deposits and give it back to the government, right? Is this like rehypothecating of lending and infinite money printing? Here, we printed money, give it to you guys. We give it to the banks, the banks give it back to the government, right? And so the whole banking system's insolvent, but they have this inflation problem. So pick which that this is what's happening today. Which one do you want? I mean, dude, inflation will piss people off. If people can't get the money that they think they have out the bank, that's when some purge level shit Okay, occurs. actually, I'm really enjoying this conversation because now we're arriving at what is reality. So what happens is they do give you the money that you have. The way they do that is effectively by printing it. And so mm. you, get, you get the $10, but the $10 isn't worth as much when you deposited it. Now is it? 
let's say the $10 is worth, for all intents and purposes, I don't know what's worth $10. Let's say two carton of eggs, okay? And then what I just explained happens, and the government fixes the problem and makes sure the bank has your $10, but now it's only worth one carton of eggs. You have $10, right? But it just doesn't get you as much anymore. Mm. And that's what happens every single time. So, the fe- so oh, oh, and you know who wins? The people that own assets, the people that own Bitcoin. So if, my, if the same amount of Bitcoin got me two car- cartons of eggs, now I got 10 cartons of eggs. You know, oh, loser, you don't own any dollars. Yeah, well, now who's laughing, right? I don't own, <laughs> I don't own, the, that, I don't own that piece of paper. I don't want it. I don't yep. want it. So anyway, Bank of America is technically insolvent. So they're sitting on all of these instruments that are underwater. However, the government made a rule change where they say, if you lent us money by buying these pieces of dog shit and you don't intend to sell them, you don't have to mark them on your balance sheet what they're actually worth. How is that legal? The government makes the rules. <laughs> if nice little rule change. Yeah, but like is Bank of America just a rule But change. is Bank of America going to go under? Um, no, it's effectively yeah, like a it's government nationalized. bank. Yeah, it's right. nationalized. Okay. So, instead of coming out and saying that and saying our banking system is effectively China's banking system, right. we're kind of we're more like the CCP than you think. Like we go into Twitter and say what you're not allowed to tweet. We spy on you guys. When there's some disease out there that we don't know about, we don't let you leave your house. Our banks are all actually insolvent and actually nationalized and state-owned. But if you were to put it like that, you'd be like, wait a second. How different are we than China? But no. They say, no, they're not insolvent. Those are held to maturity. They're not going to sell them anyway, so they don't need to change the price of them because they're going to hold them for 30 years anyway. Yeah, but that's not the point. If I were to go to the bank, if we all went to the bank and withdrew from Bank of America, they wouldn't have it. The government would need to print and bail them out. So anyway, the, the, the Federal Reserve has this problem where they're like, okay, do I fight inflation and help get it all the way down? Or right, do I let my entire banking system, everything fall apart and let everything fail? You do the first one. You fight inflation and yeah. let everything fail? Well, no, no, no. You do not let everything fail. Oh, so you bail everyone out. Yeah, yeah, Right. And so that's when people are like, oh, man, CPI is down, like the consumer price index, how they measure inflation. But I still can't seem to afford anything. It must be me. No. That's why they manipulate that thing. Mm. There's no such thing as one inflation metric. How you live your life and how I live my life are entirely different. Right. If you sit in your basement and eat ramen noodles and sit in the dark all day, your consumer price index is very different than the guy, like, than Dan Belzerian, who's flying, <laughs> yeah. flying on jets, and he has to feed 40 models a day. <laughs> like, what's that guy's CPI? It's gone up. Probably different than yours, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So the idea that the government's like, well, this index that we made, inflation's good. Yeah, bullshit. And so that's what the, that's what the financial market, that's why all the Wall Street wants Bitcoin. Is they're asking themselves the same question you are. Do I think that the government is going to let this whole thing fail? No. Okay. They'll never do that. Then they have to print more dollars. And so what do I want to own? First of all, not dollars. And then second of all, the scarcest thing I can get my hands on. So why are there a bunch of ETFs? Again, I'm not a genius. I'm just logical. It's just like, probably because everyone's afraid of what I'm afraid of. So do you think that when, so like Wall Street's in a pickle, right? You have asset managers who've, who've totally capitulated. They're orange-pilled. They're servicing Bitcoin products. You have what, I think it's Franklin Templeton. It's a Twitter account right now is laser eyes on Ben Franklin. They're tweeting all this dumb shit. Um, anyway, a part of Wall Street is capitulated. The asset managers. Another part of Wall Street is completely still incredibly antagonizing to the Bitcoin narrative. I, it's my belief, and take, you know, take this with a grain of salt, it's my belief that they have politicians in their pocket. They have Elizabeth Warren claiming that Bitcoin is for criminals. While we know that the U.S. dollar is, is uh, from a volume standpoint, finance is the most amount of illicit activity 
on planet Earth. It's the number one financial instrument to elicit financial uh, t- to elicit illegal financial activity. Number one. Yet you have these people that are in positions of power that run banks that are politicians, senators, congressmen who claim that Bitcoin is this demonstrous. It's it's this devilish financial instrument. It's only used to launch rockets into hospitals and buy drugs and solicit uh, uh, human trafficking. I mean, it's it's an interesting take and it's an interesting sort of divide now with asset managers kind of bending the knee to Bitcoin. I don't know what to say to that. Like, I love the quote, a politician's opinion is a politician's position. Yeah, like, that guy doesn't like energy. Like, why? Um, right? Like, energy, energy. The guy doesn't like electric cars, probably financed by oil and gas. Right. Yeah. Okay. So why is Jamie Dimon not like the idea that I don't have to deposit to his bank? Um, because that's the whole game. Here, here's the other thing. For the very first time ever, we have a way out. If it wasn't for Bitcoin, how would I get out? I'd be stuck. Even if I owned a house, like, it's not fully out. So for the first time in human history, we have a parallel financial system where we can all opt out. We can transact with each other. We can store wealth. We have a monetary policy that can't be changed. We can get out. So the guys that retain power and run their shops under the pretense that we remain in, what is that guy going to say about the exit door? Like, oh, that exit door, you walk through that, your head's going to get chopped off. Like, (laughs) yeah, sure, okay. But I just walked through it, and it didn't. So I'm going to get on TV and tell everyone, like, hey, that guy's full of shit. In fact, like, he banked Epstein, right? That's the part that fucking blows me. What? That's the part that blows me is uh, that guy gets on TV at a ski resort in Davos and, oh, Bitcoin's a pet rock. It's uh, only used for illegal activity. You banked Jeffrey Epstein, like one of the most abhorrent human beings to ever exist. You've allowed him (laughs) access to dollars. Like, how can that, what leg does that guy have to stand on? And by the way, we're no longer referring to CEO of Chase Bank, Jamie Dimon. He is Jeff's banker. Yeah, Epstein's banker. Again, it's like, I don't know. I'm almost exhausted at this point. Like, Jeffrey Epstein's banker is worried that Bitcoin could be used for sex trafficking. Next question. I mean, what are we, what? what? Okay, and it's just bizarre too. It's like you've heard me talk about Bitcoin now. How how long is this recording? And why I use it? How I think about it? Right. Did I bring up sex trafficking? So it was is weird. It's like he- hearing him bring up. Oh whoa, yo, we're just trying to you know not own printed currency, man. I didn't mean to get away of your island and however you guys at Chase Bank were funding all that shit that I just watched on Netflix. I didn't. I was just trying to use an honest man's financial system i didn't mean to fucking um compete with your sex trafficking ring mr diamond because as the records show you were that that guy's banker so no again like again that's when people are like you own no dollars yeah i don't trust these people all right. they do is violate their the, the trust that they ask me for they break it and they break it and they break it and they break it did I hear what that guy thought? No, I didn't. And I don't give a fuck. That's the same guy that banked Epstein. It's the same people that said this was transitory. It's the same people. It's all of this garbage. So no. And so how, what do I think about the fact that people that actually need to manage money and protect themselves want Bitcoin and the people that actually need us to keep deposits in the system so that they can run this scam don't want it? I don't know, it kind of tells me everything I need to know, right? What do I think about Epstein's banker being concerned about Bitcoin for sex trafficking? Tells me that guy's sex trafficked before, right? But it's just I, the the hypocrisy drives me through a fucking wall. I just can't mm, like That's the other that's the other awesome thing about Bitcoin as well, to be honest, is I just don't have to care anymore. 
You know, the beautiful thing about Bitcoin is I don't, it's unlike a protest where I don't need anyone to listen to me or to agree with me. Now, I think educating people and dispelling a lot of this stuff is, I, I feel like a moral obligation to do that. However, Bitcoin's going to go up whether you agree with me or not, brother. Money is not a social construct that we all need to agree to. Like if, if not everyone agrees that Bitcoin's money, then, ja and then I'm going to go to zero. So I have this extreme bias to get in everyone's face. Like, please, please, I have Bitcoin. Pump my bags. No, <laughs> I don't like, I don't need to care about Jamie Dimon. Jamie, let, let me guys, let me tell you guys something. Jamie Dimon hasn't liked Bitcoin ever since it was created. And guess what? I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need the guy to like it. So what if he keeps not liking it? Who gives a fuck? Give a fuck. Yep. I don't care, right? Money's not a social construct. We've talked about this before. I love the, you know, Saifedean Moose. I love the, you know, if we all agreed that bananas could get us to the moon, would bananas then get us to the moon? No. Someone could go to a roof, get on a banana, jump off the roof to go to the moon, and they would do what? They would just die. And then we would all learn, despite our real, honest, hard beliefs, bananas aren't good at getting us to the moon. Okay. And then the, the free market figures itself out. So I don't care that Jamie Dimon is like, no, 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 no. The dollar, the dollar, the dollar. Okay. Well, people are going to watch. Let's see. Let's see. Over the last 10 years, we've seen what's performed better, the dollar or Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Okay. And we'll see. So, like, I don't, I don't need to care anymore. And uh, so I don't pay attention to these people. They say what they want. It doesn't bother me. I sleep like a baby. And people aren't stupid. People are going to be like, wow, the people that are holding those Bitcoin things, man, they got nice houses and they got a lot of groceries and they go on a lot of vacations. And man, the people that are paycheck to paycheck in dollars, shit, you know, they've got a mortgage. They've got college tuition. They've got a car note. They've got credit card debt. Well, and people aren't stupid. They'll they'll figure it out. Mm. You get you get Bitcoin at the price you deserve. So obviously from the the Yahoo Finance interview, the Epstein's banker part to me was most of what I saw on my on my Twitter feed for the day. But I think there was a subtle, interesting point in that interview where you you called out ETH pretty intensely. I didn't. Uh, yeah, go ahead. You didn't call it out? No. I, honestly well then well then let me let me rephrase sorry the perception yeah. of the interview is that you called it out i saw this is coming from the fact that i saw a ton of shit coiners on twitter who were pissed who were shit, pissed shit coiners are always upset and i thought the explanations that they had were were really funny it was like oh well he's not wrong he's just being an asshole nothing yeah, that he said was wrong that was the he's best. just being a dick yeah that was the best you guys we're all on the same team aren't we you guys should all look it up there's this Twitter account that tweeted a Bitcoin company CEO or something like that fuds Ethereum hard. And I responded. I said, I don't think I lied, did I? I think everything I said was true. Ethereum was pre-mined. It, it did reverse transactions and roll back its blockchain. Uh, and what was the last one? Can't remember. Whatever, I, I yeah, I mean, I don't even, I, like, this is how much I care. Uh, like, I didn't lie. And he was like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not that you lied. It's that the truth instills fear, uncertainty, and doubt in everybody. And so I'd, I'd appreciate if you didn't do that. Like, what, tell the truth? I was as nice about Ethereum as I could have been. I said what's real. I said, listen, I, so I was on people chop up these interviews and like, it looks like I'm like, it's like, I was asked the question I was talking about global debt to GDP being 360% needing to own hard money, needing to own scarce assets, needing to own something in fixed supply. And I said, that's nothing other than Bitcoin. Ethereum isn't Bitcoin. It isn't like a commodity. Ethereum is a technology play. A, the Ethereum community clearly doesn't value Ethereum as money. If you valued it as hard money, you wouldn't change the rules all the time. It wouldn't have been pre-mined. If it gets, if some company gets hacked, you wouldn't roll it back. It clearly cares about it being adopted as technology. 
So here, a bunch of companies, go build shit. And if you fuck something up, we'll roll it back. Don't worry. <laughs> That's, right? It's not like a commodity. It's just not, which, like, I don't know why that offends people. Um, and yeah, people are sending me podcast links like, that guy, I can't believe he said that on TV. We're all on the same team. No, we're not. <laughs> and I'm like, we're not. And that's not, I'm not being an asshole. Like, I, <laughs> my company is a, like, strike stock is a security. I've created a security. Which, by the way, I'm not saying, like, Gensler needs to do this or that. I'm saying security in what's not a commodity. So I'm not asking Gensler to do anything. I'm just saying, I, so here's how Strike was created. I created 100% of the supply in my basement when I founded the company. And then I run the whole thing. I call the shots. I'm captain of the ship, right? You work for Strike. Yeah, yeah. It's my thing, yeah. right? I control the board. I control everything. And that's what a security in a company is. And that's, so I create 100% of the supply. And then if you're a hardworking employee that does well for me, I give you a little bit. If you give me a bunch of money as an investment, I give you a little bit. And it's like, I make decisions. That's not a bad thing. And I'm the founder of Strike. Okay. Let's say what's not a security. Corn. Who's the founder of Corn? <laughs> Who's the co-founder of Alum Earth. Aluminum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, why hasn't Gary Gensler sued soybeans yet? Be hard. Right. So, like, is Satoshi the founder of Bitcoin? No, I would say Satoshi discovered Bitcoin. Someone discovered corn. Someone discovered copper. But Gensler can't sue it. There's no foundation that could change. There's no copper 2.0 that the foundation is coming out with that's like, whoa, you think copper's good now? Wait until you see how it rusts in 2.0. <laughs> The Ethereum, like Ethereum, clearly, uh, like the eth Ethereum moved from proof of work to proof of stake because it cared about energy use or something. So, but I don't get why that makes me a dick. It's just different. And so, mm. what I said on TV is fucking Ethereum is a technology play. It's like Tesla. If it gets a lot of users and people use it for a lot of shit, then people will value it more. It's not money, though. Do I think it's a good technology play? No. And that's the main problem. Hold, hold on. Sorry. This is a long rant, but the main problem I have with it is it acts like it's like Bitcoin. What acts like money? It pretends. Like, for yeah. these fucking people that are like, we're on the same team. How could you be so mean to me? We're not. But, like, I'm not saying we're not because I don't want to be on the same team with you. I'm just being honest. I'm not going to sit here and lie on television and tell everyone that, like, yeah, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're, like, pretty much the same thing. They just slightly do different stuff. But, yeah, like, we're all in this together. No, they're just, they're very different. There's a, co there's co-founders. There are people that created all of it for themselves and handed it to their friends. They make political decisions about when to roll things back, when to cancel things, when to change the supply. There is no co-founder of wheat. There's no co-founder of fucking, yeah, I mean, co like, again, so <laughs> I, I, didn't, I'm, I don't know. I wasn't being an asshole. I, I wasn't saying, like, Ethereum's only going to go down. I said it's a technology like Tesla. It's like an equity. It's like a security. It's not a open, public, scarce commodity or scarcity like Bitcoin. Fucking, jeez, got me having Coors Light and getting fired up on this podcast. Fucking shitcoiners, man. They're just so emotional. I think they were more pissed than Jamie Dimon was. Yeah, Jamie Dimon didn't cry to me about, oh, we're <laughs> not on the same team. He knows we're not on the same team. It's okay. Whatever. And, and for, you know, I don't think Ethereum's going to get adopted because I think its entire success is riding the coattails of Bitcoin and pretending like it is something to do with Bitcoin when it's very clearly not? Like, do you use Ethereum for tokenizing real estate or ICOs or NFTs? None of those anything. things have any usage anymore. The next cycle of usage is speculating and, and riding Bitcoin's coattails. So I personally think it's dog shit. And that's why people would call it a scam is because it's acting as if it's a facade, as if it's like Bitcoin and it's not. But for the people that believe in it, whatever, give a fuck. Yeah, sure. Hope it gets adopted. I don't know. I hope Jamie Dimon tokenizes real estate on it, wherever the fuck that is. <laughs> sure. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm being honest. Stop fucking misleading people. We, uh, 
this is our first episode doing this and i think um to wrap up the episode we'd like to do just a little bit of rapid fire in terms of uh questions that were posted to us via reddit via twitter uh we'll make a post every week if you guys have questions about strike bitcoin i don't know who's gonna win the super bowl um let us know and they'll be highlighted here and so uh starting off with the first question from hodl magoo uh is a bitcoin checking account and debit card coming hashtag get on zero. Oh, talking about strike um so uh manuela is a strike employee she leads all things product at strike she's awesome shout out to manuela she would know the details what i know is we built a debit card actually i used it for a while i lived on it we didn't think it was a very good product it wasn't a good product for us as a business like the margins of the product the risk all the intermediaries that come with you got a card issue or a bank issue or a fraud issue all this shit um and it wasn't a good product for our customers our customers like i again i think the best setup is live on credit let someone give you a line of credit a credit card where you can spend fiat without needing to own it and you should just be able to pay that bill with bitcoin so we are planning to do some bill pay like tools for people to live solely on bitcoin but i don't think a debit card is a very good product i think if you have access to a credit card why would you use a debit card so we totally 180'd on a debit card and if you know our customers really want one for whatever reason then um sure but i think you know, use, use Amex, use whatever, like those people give you Napa Valley points and free flights on United, sit first class, champagne, tickets to sports games. So it's totally fiat. They're going to spend a ton of money to get you to use their credit card and then just pay it off with sets. So we will do the bill pay shit um, for sure. I don't know when, ask Manuela on Twitter, I'll tag her. Um, but the debit card, I'm just not really bullish on strike building a debit card. We're a Bitcoin company. We don't need to be wasting our time on that shit. Mm. I know, but I mean, we, we, I fucked up. Like I thought we, we should. So, Hey, hand up, you know, a real man when he admits he's wrong, I fucked up. Totally. We built it. Um, and we sent an email to our customers. I, I thought it was, I, I don't, I just don't believe in it. I don't think it's what we need. Ryan M S. 77 asks when limit orders on strike we should get manuela to come on these it's another manuela question um i think uh at some point probably soon right we build listen we build products for our customers mm -hmm. so if our customers want something they'll get it obviously you got to build one thing at a time you got to build it well so can't get it all at once but yeah i mean all these type of questions guys like if you guys want something, you'll get it from us for sure. I think right now our focus is going global. We want, I don't know of a Bitcoin focused company around the world that's just solely focused on delivering pure Bitcoin experiences. And that's who we want to be. So we're going to get that out of the way first. And then a lot of this stuff I know we'll build. Mm. And then the last question that we have is from Coin Gypsy. Uh, Coin Gypsy asks, do you see access to strike for countries in Europe anytime soon? Would love access to it in Iceland. Yes. Yes. We've got three regions of the world coming. So first of all, right now, strike is available in the United States of America everywhere except Hawaii and New York. We're working on them. They're just way more difficult than everywhere else. But the United States, including uh, Puerto Rico, by the way, and then, so that's one country. And then there's 69 others where we're available in some capacity. So we've got, in my opinion, one of the best Bitcoin and Lightning wallets in the world, uh, buy, sell Bitcoin, and 69 markets. But we really want to deliver like the US experience as, in as many places as we can. And we've got three new regions, not countries, like regions of the planet that we're launching hopefully in Q1. I mean, I say all this stuff because I don't like, you know, making promises, especially anymore, right? I've, I've, learned, <laughs> I've learned my lesson. Yeah. So um, I, I know there'll be, I don't know, if not in Q1 soon uh, after. And yeah, Europe's one. Europe's one. Um, the UK is not one of the three. It'll be the fourth. So the UK will be a quick follow. 
And then, yeah, I mean, you guys can maybe put your brains together and guess. There's not that many regions of the world, so you guys can guess what the other two are. But uh, we're at, we're coming like very quickly global. We want to be one of the best in the world at Bitcoin. And to us, that's technology. That's making sure we're licensed and regulated and compliant so that we can serve you the services and not rug pull and be here for the very end. Uh, that means buy, sell. That means all of the things. And that means being global. I think inherently part of Bitcoin and being a company that serves Bitcoin products is doing it all over the planet. Um, you can get cross-border payments. You can get, all, you know, there's a lot that I think this technology will yield. So next three months for Strike, I'm sorry for the wait, Lil Wayne. But uh, yes, Europe and a bunch of others. UK, coming, coming. I think that wraps up the episode. Do you have any, you have any parting thoughts? No, man. I'm like hot Fe- over here. I felt like a- you got it all, all off your chest. Yeah, god yeah. damn. These things are exhausting. I'm over here chugging beer and water. Good. No. Well, the fun thing about these things is that uh, these happen every week. Uh, we'll be back next week, likely talking about the same shit. Although that's entirely up to you guys. So please, you can find us in the links in the bio. Ask us any questions. We love talking Bitcoin, finance, politics, sports, really, strike, anything. You know, nothing's off limits. Um, we'll be back next Monday. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you guys for tuning in. You think corn's going to switch to proof of stake? Mm, I got to talk to the CEO first. I can't believe they pre-mined all the, put in all these burritos at Chipotle. I got to talk all to right. the CEO first. Thank you guys. Peace.